Hi, in the following sequence of videos, I'd like to recap some one-dimensional NMR spectroscopy and introduce you in how to process and uh, use two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy. To start with, I have taken a molecule you have met earlier, ibuprofen, and that is a nice molecule because a lot of information we can actually gather already from the proton and this helps us to understand the subsequent experiments a bit better. Starting with a very complicated molecule, if you have never done two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy, is quite tricky. However, two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy is brilliant if you have to analyze molecules where you have no clue about them. So let us start. I've been drawing here the structure of ibuprofen, so you can see that one already. And here we have the uh, proton NMR. So to start with, we will just check where the reference is. So this spectrum has been run in chloroform, deuterated chloroform, you can see up here. So this means I zoom in and since I have an aromatic system, our chloroform signal is quite close to the signal of the aromatic system, so I have to go here to the side. So I have press the letter L that will open up my calibration window. I select chloroform, proton MNMR and say OK. So now this calibration should have been done. I can go back to the full view of the spectrum. So the next thing I'd like to do is to do some peak picking. So I zoom in my spectrum first of all again. So peak picking is pressing the letter K, that's an easy way, then holding down the left mouse button and you can see here we get our signals. So either we move the spectrum now here along, we can do this because we have quite a number of signals here in the range and I pick one signal after the other one. So they are quite isolated, so there's no signal overlap that makes life really, really easy. If I find that I can't read my numbers here, I can always go and change my font size. So I may want to have it in 10, so it's a bit easier to see. Um, two decimals is fine. Yeah, that just looks good. Since I'm already here for the integration, I can just change to one decimal because that's what I want to use. And the font I will again set for 10 because it's easier to read. Apply again. And if I want to do multiplets, do exactly the same thing. Select font. It's already on 10. That's good. And for the multiplets again, I need two decimals for the shift. And for the J couplings, I'm absolutely happy with only one. And maybe I want to see the J trees as well. So apply. So by this, I should be fairly okay. So the next thing is now to uh, do the uh, integration. And from my structure, I can see that I expect um, four protons here in the aromatic area. And possibly those two are in a very similar chemical environment. So that should be a signal that overlaps or is joined, conjoined, and the, the other one is here. So I could use those signals because that's easy to find. Otherwise, I could go for my methyl groups. They possibly overlap as well. Or if I'm good, I can find this methyl group as well. There are also two signals that are representing only one proton. So I could go for those or I could go for that one here. Since I have seen so many NMR spectra, for me it doesn't really matter. But maybe for you it's 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 a good start to look for the aromatic system and just take an integration for one of those signals and set it to 2. So I press the letter I, which allows me to swap to that tool. So that looks actually quite good. Now we have to change it to so do a right mouse click and normalize the signal to 2. Oops, not 3, 2. And close it again. Okay, in this sense I can go through the whole spectrum. That's one, that's two, one, and this is three, and this is six. So this sample is quite strong. You see even the couplings here to the carbon 13, which uh, you usually don't even see. 
we can use a multiple manager. So press the letter J and see what we get here. So it messes our spectrum up a little bit. But if we want to do it, we can. So we get a nice tree there. Another tree over here. So now we have basically done what we can do here. If I go back and have a look at the full spectrum, zoom again. What can I gather from here? I get my four protons from the aromatic system. I can't at the moment tell which set belongs to which side here. So whether it's 10 and 6 or 9 and 7, I can't see this. The quaternary obviously are not turning up. Then I have two times signals that have an integration of 1. Here I can use the chemical shift to get the decision or we can also look at the coupling pattern. If I look at this CH group then I see it will only couple with this CH3 group. So I would possibly expect a quartet for this one. And um, here the CH will possibly couple with those. So those two are identical in terms of the chemical env environment. So those would give us a quartet and this quartet will be then further split by this triplet. And um, if we look at the chemical shift, then this one is close to an oxygen. So it's quite quite likely that this signal belongs to this CH group. So and then this one must be the other one. Then we have only one CH2 group, so that must be this signal. And then this is a single methyl group, so that is possibly that signal and our two methyl groups here, they are overlapping, forming a duplet, and they integrate nicely to 6. So by this we have actually identified all the signals and we have done what we could. We obviously could run a report, but at the moment I'm not interested in the report at all.